Okay guys, hi, uh, this is Einar. I hope you're doing great today and welcome to this theoretical tutorial about the coefficient of determination also known as R squared. Now, uh, this tutorial is based on a series of tutorials I held when I was teaching a course of statistics here at the Stockholm University and it's a bit more advanced than that course so if you guys are watching that you need to learn uh, that earlier tutorials before and that goes for everybody else who has, hasn't studied much statistics. Um, what you need to learn first is the standard deviation, variation around the mean, and a little bit about scatter plots. But if you feel comfortable or if you're just curious, I encourage you to just continue watching. It's a really exciting measure, and I think we should just get going and start talking. Um, okay, so say that we have a data set that looks like this. Uh, each dot is an observation, uh, and uh, a person comes up to me and says, Hey, Einar, uh, would you please just describe uh, Y for me? You just give me one value that describes uh, the observations values for y in your investigation. And I would have to say that the mean is the best guess for that. But I mean, it's not a really good guess because if you take a look at these dots, it does seem like they do point upwards, right? It seems like when we have a low value for x, we have a low value for y. And when we have a high value for x, we have a high value for y. So I would like to you know, describe it in, with something in more detail than why. I would like to ask the person the question, well, for which value of x are you talking about? I mean, for high values of x, we will tend to have high values and y. And he'll say, what do you mean? <laughs> so let's just start by drawing a line like this. Is this a better guess? Well, it does describe the fact that when this regression line, as we call it, we call it a regression line, uh, has low values for x, it also has low values for y. And when it has high values for x, it has high values for y. So it's better than just saying uh, y always has the same value, I would say, just from looking at it. But we need to know this statistically. Now, before moving on to that, I'm going to tell you regression lines is a very interesting concept. There are different ways of calculating them. Uh, and I might make a tutorial about that later. But for now, just accept that we just have this line. There, There is a way of calculating it. I might show you later. Um, so is this a better guess? Well what def define a good guess? I would say that a good guess is a guess with as little variation as possible. I guess that it's as close to the truth as possible. So if I picked a, a random piece of the, one of these random observations, I want the guess that I'm telling the person to be as close to this observation as possible. So what we could do is we could measure the distances that these observations have from the average and the regression line and compare them. And I'm going to do this mathematically. I'm going to do it physically, like literally. I'm doing it here. I'm just stacking up all the distances on a big pile. Uh, and in this case, it's the distances from the mean or the average. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking all the, each observation's distance and adding it to a big pile that we're going to compare to the distances to the regression line later. And mathematically, what we're doing is we're taking the sum and we're moving through uh, each observation, starting at 1, the first observation, up to the final observation, which is the size of our sample, n. And we're taking each observation's value for y and subtracting the mean from that. And we need to square it, because if we don't square it, uh, this will sum up to zero, which is no good in our case. We need, uh, we need to square it to get a value that we can work with. Otherwise, it will always be zero, no matter what the observations look like. That's not good. Again, if you don't understand that, you need to check out the tutorials about variation. Um, and uh, that's why we call it SST, the sum squared total. Now we call it total because it's the total variation around the mean, which is what we're comparing to. This is this is the base. This is our first case. You know, it's the basic basic measure of variation in the data set. Uh, sum squared total, and we're going to compare this to these distances, which are the distances to the regression. Now another word for these distances are actually residuals. Statistic statisticians <laughs> call these residuals, and that's why we have an R here. And it's very similar formula to the formula we had for distances to the mean. It's the difference is that we've exchanged the mean for uh, the estimation of y. And we call it the estimation because it, it varies for different values of x. You see this regression line? Remember I said when the low values here, low values there, high values there, high values here. Yeah, that's what we're expressing here. This is a value that's going to change. But we're still taking each observation's value from, for y and then subtracting uh, the value for the regression line at that point uh, of x, so to speak. And then we're squaring it. So it's the sum of the squared residuals. And this is sometimes written as e squared. I'm just putting in this there so you know when you see it. This is one way of, of writing it too. Oh, okay, so we have the distances. Let's take a look at them. 
I've piled up all the distances from the regression line here and all the distances from the mean right here. And we can see this pile is smaller than that one. So there seems to be less variation around the regression line than there is around the mean. Excellent. Our regression line is, seems to be like a, is a better guess than the average. But this isn't good enough to, to social scientists. You have to have actually a statistical measure that you can compare between data sets. And that's simple enough to use in other formulas, maybe, or, or in reports, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate R squared. And before you don't panic, okay, relax. Uh, I'm going to talk about this step by step. I'm just going to start talking about what R squared is supposed to mean. We want R squared to tell us uh, how good our uh, regression line guess is. And when R squared is close to 1, our regression line is a good guess. When R squared is close to 0, the average is a better guess. So let's look at the characteristics of the formula. We have 1 minus, and then we have the residuals here. See, the, this is the residual, not the mean. And we're taking each observation's values for y and subtracting the residual and squaring it. And then we're dividing this by the summed uh, distances from the mean and squared, of course. Uh, then we're subtracting it for 1 because, well, I'll, I'll show you more about that. But first I'm going to show you this, uh, these other ways of writing it. This, this means the same thing as this. This means the same thing as this. This is just saying the residuals divided by the summed squared total, which is this, obviously, the, the distances from the mean. And you could also, like, in its simplest form, it's written like this. The sum of squared residuals divided by the sum squared total, and you take 1 and subtract that. And why are we taking 1 and subtracting that? It's a good question. And that's why I asked it. <laughs> uh, the reason is that when we have a low value here, i.e. we have low distances from the regression line, I would say that's, that means that's a good sign. And if we divide that by the relatively high uh, distances from the mean, we're going to get a small value here. And when you take 1 minus a small value, you get a, a result that is close to 1 which also means our r squared is close to 1, which means our regression line is a good guess, the regression line is a better guess. On the other hand, if we find that we have huge distances from our regression line, almost as huge as the distances from the average perhaps, well then this is going to become a high value, it's actually become a value that is close to 1. And when you take 1 minus uh, 1, you're going to get 0. Uh, so when r squared is 0, we have a uh, and the average is perhaps a better guess, or there is a non-linear correlation going on. Now, this isn't part of this tutorial really. I'm just showing it because it's part of how you interpret R squared. You know, either R squared means that the average is a better guess, or that there's something else going on. And you could see that by looking at a scatter plot. In this case, we have a non-linear correlation. I mean, it's it's not it doesn't go up like like that like this consistently. I mean, we have a linear correlation positive up to this point when it suddenly becomes negative. So it's a curved uh, correlation. And there are other ways of measuring that, but this is going to give us huge distances from the, uh, a linear regression line, and that's going to give us a low R squared. So be careful about that. You need always to look at your data physically. Uh, but then again, this is another story to enjoy later, uh, uh, in perhaps a later tutorial. So I hope you have some fun with R squared. Uh, Check it out. Try drawing scatter plots and putting in different values and, and comparing heaps of distances or doing it mathematically. That's even better or as good. Who knows? Uh, and try to have some fun with R squared. It's used in a lot of statistics. You know, it's a very useful measure. Uh, so it's, it's going to be of great use to you. I'll see you later. Have a really great day. Bye-bye.